All right, we are back live. We haven't been live for a couple weeks now. Um, today we're going to talk about the Husker injury report because it is Hey Iowa week here um, in Nebraska. <laughs> and hopefully all over the rest of the Big Ten. So there's a little, if you follow Husker football at all or if you live in the proximity of the state of Nebraska, you probably heard um, dealing with a few injuries right now. So we're going to kind of break down one in particular. Starting quarterback Tommy Armstrong is dealing with a hamstring injury. Um, hamstring injuries are something we see not only in football players but athletes in general. Very, very common. Um, decimated my fan- fantasy football team this year <laughs> actually as well with Doug Martin and Tevin Coleman. <laughs> so if you're any fantasy fans out there, um, hamstring injuries are a big deal in sports. So we'll kind of just break down how we can manage, treat those um, from a chiropractic standpoint and what we would generally do. So I'll kind of just pose that to Corey, let him run with it to start. Yeah, we see... Um You know, we don't see a ton of hamstring injuries, but when we do see them here, um, because we see so many runners, it's usually one of two things. It's either an overuse type of of injury or they're doing something that's more ballistic that their bodies weren't used to doing. Um, A lot of times we'll see it with uh, in runners that are doing plyometric training or some sort of circuit training in between um, because they're not used to using the fast twitch kind of muscles that, that... you know they need to use in some of those activities so it's almost always an injury that happens in the what we call the eccentric phase of of the of the running gait and it's usually right before the heel hits the ground and it's that lengthening under contraction that's usually when we strain or pull or tear a hamstring hamstring tears are, are much less prevalent than what some people may think I always hear that I think I tore my hamstring I just had a patient today say the same thing and it's a full thickness tear is very rare in a hamstring there's usually some sort of traumatic event that goes along with it and you'll you'll actually feel and hear things happen in the hamstring Um, so that's not very common and that's not something we see here a lot usually the injury happens right before the heel hits the ground and it's usually on um, in something that's more ballistic, like a sprint or some sort of interval run where they decrease their speed and then increase their speed and they try to fluctuate between those two. That's usually when we see more of our hamstring strains. And we see it in your, more of your ballistic athletes. Your um, Soccer is a common one. Yes, run. thank you. I was yeah. hoping you'd say that first. <laughs> soccer is interesting because it is, it's one of those that there's short bursts of, of speed and then it's, there's this long lull of where it's you know, more of a an aerobic type of setting and then they have to like turn it on real quickly and so that coupled with the planting and the kicking um, could put the hamstring underneath a, a, a fair amount of load and it's funny because you would think that in soccer players it's the kicking leg where you hit, hurt the hamstrings the most and that's actually not the case it's usually the the plant leg that gets the injuries uh, the strains more often in the hamstrings because there's a float phase before they strike the ground and there's this eccentric load that strains and kind of pulls at the hamstring. And typically what happens is there's just some micro tears or some, some small strains within the usually the middle part of the muscle belly and it'll create adhesions and, and uh, that kind of sticky spot in the muscle where it can't be elastic. And so our job is to restore some of that elasticity Uh, Look at the foot and ankle because there's always some sort of foot and ankle dysfunction that leads prior uh, Dysfunction prior to the the hamstring being injured It could be a repetitive thing from foot and ankle dysfunction And then also look at control of the hip and the pelvis because the hamstring actually attaches into the pelvis through the sacro tuberous ligament Which is all big fancy words But if you don't look at the pelvic stability and and how we control the pelvis and the core then working on the hamstring is is kind of just a symptomatic control because we have to change the foundation where all those muscles attach to help prevent that and oddly enough <clears throat> you would think that you know more it's more a soft tissue type of thing but once we get some of those soft tissue aspects addressed then we actually turn the hamstrings on and we act we use that eccentric activation to help the hamstrings heal much quicker and so i think that's probably something that we do a little bit differently here than a lot of people do we actually uh, start to rehab the hamstring relatively quickly in those injuries. It's all about controlling the load. So kind of going, breaking down some of what we're talking about, eccentric load is just, it's lengthening. It's loading a muscle as it lengthens. So if you think about a bicep curl, if I was to go here, that's concentrically. I'm, the muscle is shortening under contraction. Opposite of that would be if I'm, if I'm holding a weight here and I'm letting it down. So what happens to the hamstring, and while it's very, very susceptible to injury, is because A, like Corey said, it's a two-joint it's a two-joint muscle. It crosses the hip and the knee, so it's more susceptible because 
based off of the angles at the different joints um, will affect how the hamstring is loaded. And then also because of sprinting, the eccentrically, your goal as you, whether you're going to plant to kick a soccer ball or whether you're Tommy Armstrong running into the end zone and you're trying to slow your speed down, because that's basically when it happened. You kind of saw him, obviously he's running as fast as he can, and then when he gets in the end zone, he has to slow down. So as he goes to, his foot goes to hit the ground, eccentrically, the hamstrings are lengthening, contracting to try to slow down the swing phase of the gait or the running cycle. So that's where you typically see it happen. And like Corey said, it's all about controlling load. We'll, we'll do the muscle work where we will work with the foot and ankle and the hip to kind of distribute load throughout the whole system and then we'll implement low level load here in the office whether it's through a nordic hamstring exercise that's pretty um as a more of a return to play it's not something we'll do right away because a lot of times they're not ready for it we'll start with kind of more of the isometrics just being able to engage the hamstring in a no movement involved um, and then pro hopefully progress there's actually a lot of great research out here the nordic hamstring exercise is a great eccentric exercise for athletes that has shown to prevent hamstring injuries. So whenever these kind of pop up, whether, I mean, just last week, like my fantasy team has been decimated by <laughs> hamstring injuries. We've seen it with uh, the Huskers, with Tommy Armstrong, AJ Green, heck, any AJ Green owners out there, he's practically, I think he's going to be out for the season yeah. because of, in a, of a torn hamstring potentially. Right. So obviously those, those athletes that are going very, very fast and slowing down very, very quickly, they place a lot of load on those tissues. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we're seeing so much so much of this later in the season. Like endurance is definitely an, an issue. Like you saw Tommy kind of do it later in the game. Perhaps like he he's able to handle it. Maybe there was a minor tweak throughout the game and then that last little bit kind of just to kind of just did him in. So generally too, like I kind of think about prognosis wise from hamstring injuries, it's a little bit easier to rehab hamstring injuries as they're closer to the knee. And once they start coming up here more into the, the part of the muscle belly, kind of sneak into that sacred tuberous ligament, then we get, sometimes we have a little bit more troubles with it. So they kind of use, based off the length of your femur, where, whether it's closer to the hip or to the knee, kind of tells you the prognosis of the hamstring right. injury. Yeah, that's, that's right. And it's, Wherever you feel it, like that's always important for us because that's what we're going to do for the symptom control. That's where we're going to do our tool assisted releases or dry needle or whatever it is that we decide to do with that. Um, and then, like Jay said, it's the quicker we can get you back into lengthening under contraction, the better off we heal. So even though it may be somewhat painful what we're doing here, and we, I just had a person in here, we, we worked on a hamstring injury. Um, she's an older lady, but she still runs every day. We actually have her doing... Um, some, uh, some of the Nordic exercises and using an exercise ball to help kind of control that movement. Um, and she's actually doing pretty well with that. And she's responded even though, you know, she doesn't have the flexibility that somebody, you know, Jace's age would have. You know? So we, the sooner we can get you back to using it, the, the better off you are and the more, the more you're going to enjoy being able to get back to what it is that you're doing. But the, the position of the hamstring injury does change kind of how the treatment plan is going to go and kind of how what we can expect from a treatment plan right. standpoint so another very interesting test like a return to play test basically saying hey are you ready to kind of get back into the practice and that kind of stuff is you lay flat on your back and then you will actually test that ballistically because you in any sport whether it's running soccer football you are going to be exposed to those ballistic movements of the hamstring right. so you'll lay on your back and you'll actually do a, I think it's called the T test it's a ballistic straight leg raise essentially right. what it is and you compare it side to side and they should right. be um, relatively normal so obviously generally the hamstring is a unilateral injury like it only happens to one not the other so you always have that kind of that comparisons um, to make with that ballistic straight leg raise and that's kind of hey you're going to be exposed to this so we need to test this before we kind of put you back out into the that sport that's a good return to play kind of criteria that we use here in the office as well as can you perform an eccentric load on the hamstring, whether it's a Nordic or something else, without having symptoms. Because if you can't do it in a very controlled setting, like a, a Nordic, you're not going to be able to do it in an uncontrolled setting on a field or right. sprinting. So Another question we get is about hamstring stretching. Like People say all the time their hamstrings are tight, they're always tight. The, the hamstring muscle is, is, you know, some of the postural restoration people out there um, realize there's some importance to, you know, how it, how it works with the pelvis. But the hamstring typically is long and tight, meaning as our pelvis tips forward, the muscles underneath a tensile load the whole time. So it's actually what Shirley Sarman calls locked long. And so it's a muscle that's fighting against the stretch due to pelvis position. So that's another reason why 
like hamstring stretching is it's it's okay but it's really not going to prevent hamstring strains and tears uh, I'm sure Tommy Armstrong was more than stretched out by the time he hurt his, his hamstring because he was warm. It's better if you're going to do hamstring stretching, we have some things on, uh, and we're going to add some more things on YouTube. It's better to do it with movement because muscles and joints feed off of motion um, in more of a dynamic way. We know that static stretching after a couple seconds really isn't any, there's no benefit. You don't get any muscle lengthening and you actually fight it to some extent. So it just increases your stretch tolerance. Like yeah. you, like the pain, because you're holding it at that painful level, you, your body just becomes more aware of it, more tolerant of it. And that's why you can reach farther rather than the muscle actually lengthening, right. which if it, the sh hamstrings, which we know are typically long and tight, you don't, it's not a length issue, right? It's actually a more of a pelvic control, um, they're too long and a lot of times they're weak too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're, they're synergists. They help us with hip extension, but they're, one of their main goals is to slow the leg down. Like, like Jace just said, and that's when we used to see the injuries. So stretching a muscle that's already long and tight, isn't necessarily going to be much benefit. You're better off if you can warm it up or if you can lengthen it, put it underneath a load and then move through a number of different ranges of motion to kind of help prepare it for, being able to be lengthened and then in these different planes of movement, that's actually probably a better thing. Just a static stretch where you reach for your toes doesn't really help you much and it doesn't tell us anything about you know the function of what's going on in the hamstring and whether you're predisposed for a tear or not. And it's funny because the people that are tighter actually have fewer tears than people that are extremely flexible because yeah. there's they can't create that inherent stiffness that helps you be ballistic. And so they actually, people with a lot of flexibility, they, they struggle with these things more than people that are stiff. Right. So the stiffness aspect isn't really, like whether you can touch the ground or not doesn't tell us much as far as, and whether you're, you're going to prevent your, your hamstring from tearing or not. That's not really a prerequisite or a predisposing factor by any means. Yeah, so uh, we are patiently awaiting whether Tommy or Riker's going to play, because Riker just, I just saw when I was looking up the stuff about Tommy, Riker apparently got his wrist pinned, he has a broken bone in his wrist, um, on his non-throwing hand. Is he what? No, yeah. No, it's right, yeah. Sorry, it's just it hand. actually flips on the camera, right. so <laughs> <laughs> it looks like my right hand, but this is definitely left. Um, so I think we'll just leave it at that today. Yeah. We kind of have a shortened week. Wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, you want to predict the score? Have you seen the thread? Is it three? It's worth, worth three point yeah. underdogs. Which is basically a pick em because I was at right. home. Right. Um, right. I, I think we win this game, and I look a lot like Mike Riley. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so just because of how my team is prepared this week and, and just having that, that inside insight into the team because I look a lot like Coach Riley, I guess we had a patient call in and said they wanted the chiropractor looks like Mike Riley. And that's got to be me because it's definitely not him. Um, and I'm actually going to throw my, my, my hat back in there. I think I've got like at least a quarter or so left in eligibility. So I'm going to play a little quarterback if they need me to. Um, I got a terrible arm and I can't, I can't really throw very hard, but um, I could definitely run the, the, the option. So I think if I play, we'll lose. But if, if they don't have to call on me, I think Tommy plays. I think, I think Nebraska wins in a, in a slugfest in an ugly one by maybe a field goal, maybe a touchdown. Yeah, That's what I think. Um, I'll definitely take the Huskers. I'm really hoping we can pull it out. It's kind of been an interesting series. Um, generally, the road team has won, which right. is actually kind of good for us because we're on the road this year. Um, yep. And then also we have Creighton Soccer returns home for their NCAA tournament game, third round, Sweet 16, on Saturday against Providence. I will be there. Really, really excited that we get another home game. It was kind of a crazy upset of that Providence beat Maryland. So we're fortunate to have another home game. Pack Pack Morrison, I think we are going to pull it out 2-1 to one over Providence and go on to the Elite Eight. And Creighton basketball. Woo! Woo! Top, uh, excuse me, 12. I wanted to say top 10. We're, we're getting there. We are yep. getting there. So thank you. Have a happy holiday. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. We'll see you soon. <laughs>